Hello, in this video tutorial I'm going to be building Solar's add-in from scratch using visualbasic.net. The add-in will manage uh, issues in Solar's files, so it will display its interface in task pane which will be built using WPF. All created issues will be stored directly into the file stream, so for example file can be copied or moved to another machine and all the issues will be preserved. Let's start by creating a new project in Visual Studio. Let's navigate to templates for Visual Basic, select class library, give our project a name, let's call it Issues Manager. Next, let's install the Swax framework to our project. I'm going to install this framework from a NuGet. So let's navigate to NuGet Manager and search for Swax framework and install swax.addon framework into our project. We can rename our main class to emphasize that this is uh, our main add-in, uh, like entry point of this project, so let's call it add-in. And as a next step I'm going to inherit that class from SW add-in X class from Svex framework. This will allow me to, uh, with a minimal number of code lines, implement the Solar's add-in. So let me just uh, inherit it and we can overwrite the function on connect, which is going to be called every time my add-in is loaded. It says important to mark that class as convisible and also we can use the auto register attribute which is allows to uh, register this um, add-in in registry so Solar's can see it. We also need to check the register for com interrupts option in project settings. Let's add a user control to our project which will be hosting in a task pane and it will eventually show our issues. So let's add new item, select user control from templates, give it some name, click add. And for now I'm just going to place some label on that control so we can see how it works and later we'll replace it with a proper issues manager UI. We can just drop label control onto my workspace and rename the caption of it. Let's call it issues manager. It is very simple to add task pane using Svex framework. It is just required to call create task pane method and pass the control type which we're going to host in the task pane. Like this. Just a few more changes before we start debugging. The first one is to specify the external program which is going to be passed to our Solar's application and second is to change the Solar's interrupt types to be not embedded. Set the embed interrupt types option to false for all of them. We can launch the debugger either by clicking start button or F5. So Solar's is launched and you can see our task pane is created with the control hosted inside it. I will be using Windows Presentation Foundation WPF to create this user interface and I will start with creating our uh, data model class which is going to be representing our issue. So let me start and create new issue class and let's add few public properties. So we're going to hold ID of our issue, summary and the description. Let's now add WPF user control to our project. So similar as I added the WinForms control, I can go to our project select right mouse button and click add new item from the context menu, navigate to WPF templates and select user control, give it some name and you might also need to add some additional references to support WPF. So if I try to build that project as it is, it will fail as some references are missing, so I can just simply go to add references and just tick the missing references. So I will need the system.xaml. Now I can rebuild my project to make sure everything is correct. So, as you can see, it builds correctly. As a next step, I want to host my WPF user control onto my Windows Form user control. So I will just remove the temp label and search for element host control and drop it into my user control. From the drop down, I could select the WPF control I want to host. I can also specify the name of that control. I need it because I'm going to query that later. And I can specify the location to fill. So my WPF control will be filled in my uh, Windows Form control and will be resized accordingly as my task pane resizes. I'm going to add the public read-only property which is going to return me the pointer to my WPF control from Windows control because I want to query that as a variable from my add-in. So I can just call the corresponding property and assign the variable. We'll be using the observable collection to hold my issues so WPF 
user interface could react automatically whenever this collection changes and update the UI accordingly. I will assign those issues as a data context of my WPF control. And let's now come back to control and create the user interface. If you have never used WPF before, it might look a bit different to what you do when you create an interface in Windows Forms. But WPF provides very rich options to create a responsive and advanced user interface. It allows to employ data binding as well as automatic notification to update the UI whenever your data model has changed. So now I'm just building the list view control which is going to render all of my issues and each list item is going to be representing the single issue with few text box and labels which is going to render my summary and description of the corresponding issue. With the help of WPF data binding, all of the user interface will be updated automatically whenever I change anything in my original data model. I also change the default style of my uh, list view item so the content will be stretched for the full width. Let's compile the project to make sure that it is compilable. Okay, now I'm going to add create new issue button to my interface and rather than adding this directly to user control, I'm going to employ standard buttons of task pane. Swex framework makes it really simple to add those buttons. The only thing I need to do is to create the enumeration, which is going to hold my commands. And I just need to create a function, which is going to be called when my button is clicked. And the value of enumeration will be passed into that function, so I can recognize which command is clicked in case you are using more than one command. I'm going to use integer ID as unique identifier of my issue. So when I create new issue, I just need to find the last ID of my existing ones and just increment it by one. I need to add it to my observable collection and my user interface will be updated accordingly. Let me rename my variable which holds the issues to better reflect what it is doing. So it is actually the collection of issues. And to enable the commands in my task pane, I just need to use a different overload of create task pane method from Svex framework. And I just need to specify what commands I want to host. I will be using the second overload of that method. And as a first parameter of the generic, I'm going to specify the type of control. And the second one, the enumeration of my commands. And the final step, I just need to specify the handler function as an address of keyword. So on create new issue. Let's start it now and see how it works. I'm just going to hit F5. SolidWorks is launching. I'm activating the task pane and you can see when I click the button in the task pane, this method get called and I can just add new issue and you can see that my user interface is updated accordingly. I can click this button a few more times to see how it is reflected in my user interface. Now those issues are application level and, and they not get stored anywhere and only exist in the active session of SolidWorks. So let's now modify our add-in and save those issues into the model stream. Svex Frameworks provides a very handy utility to save those in third-party storage or store within the SolidWorks file. Let me start by creating a new class and call it issues document. This is going to be a wrapper around our imodel.doc2 interface. So this is going to be created for each model opened in SolidWorks. I just need to inherit it from the document handler. I'm going to create the issues control over here. So everything which will be related to those issue manager for that particular model will be stored in that class. So I'm just going to move a few properties from my uh, add-in into that issue manager document. So let me firstly uh, move the issues variable. And I also can override the onActivate method, which is going to be called every time my model is activated. And this is where I want to update my task pane to display the issues of this particular model. I will also move the create new issue routine into the document. So whenever the create new issue button is clicked, the issue will be created in the active document. I'll be storing all of my issues data within the SolidWorks stream. So I just need to uh, overload the corresponding methods. I'm just going to specify the name of my stream. That should be unique per model. In the data context of my control, update the user interface. So I will also want to update the user interface whenever my uh, stream is loaded and whenever I read the issues, so basically in this function. X framework provides very easy to use utility to uh, handle the lifecycle of your documents. So I can just use a documents handler uh, utility and create an instance from that from my add-in. 
I just need to call create documents handler method and pass the type of the handler I want uh, to be created. So in our case, it's going to be a issues document handler. So let me create a variable here. I'm using the generic and specifying the type of my document I'm going to create. And framework will take care of everything of creating those handlers whenever a new model is created, as well as disporting that when it is destroyed. So I can create a handler uh, function, which is going to be called whenever a new model is created. I can use this handler to assign the pointer to the user control because it's going to be used from within the document itself. Access the handler of my active document and just call it create new issue whenever a new issue button is clicked. Now let's implement serialization and deserialization of our issues data into the file stream. So let's firstly implement deserialization. So I'm just going to access the stream and I can use a Svex framework for that. So by just calling access third party stream and specifying false to indicate that I'm accessing that for reading. In this example, I will be using XML serializer from .NET Framework, but you can use any other type of serializer. So it's quite simple. So I just need to create an instance of the serializer, specify the type of the structure, and call the deserialize to get the structure from my stream. In a very similar way, I could implement saving. I'm just going to use serialize method to store my data. Let's give it a try and see how it works. So I'm going to start my solvers again. I'm just putting a couple of breakpoints. Let me open some SolidWorks parts. And you can see my breakpoint is hit because uh, Svex framework created a handler of the document and it also hit here. And you can see my stream is null because this model didn't have any issues stored before. So I'm just going to create a new instance of the collection. Let me just activate my uh, task pane, create one issue, specify some summary and some description, and then save the model. Save to storage handler is hit. I can access the stream for writing. Use serializer to store the structure. So you can see my issues now been serialized directly into the model stream. So I can close this model and open it again. So I should uh, hit the onload from storage method so you can see it's hit so this is where i read the data from my issue so let me just open any other document so we're going to hit the document handler created so again there is no issues in this document and you can see my task pane is going to be emptied now because there is no issues here of course i can create new issue or i can activate my previous model and you can see that uh, the task pane is updated Let's create a couple of issues in the second document and fill the data in them. It will call our onSave to stream method where we serialize that data into that particular model. We can also create new items and it's going to be working in exactly the same way. I mentioned the data is stored directly into the file, so I can just close all of the models and open them again and all of the data will be loaded dynamically. So let me open the first document. Yep, you can see stream is not null and I can just serialize the data and it has one issue and it will be immediately displayed in the user interface. Of course, I can also do some modifications. So let me just modify that description, save it again. The data will be overwritten. The last step, let me show you how you can customize the look and feel of your user interface, how to change tooltips and icons of your task pane. It is very simple with Svex framework. So here I have a couple of icons with a transparent background. One is going to be used for my button and one for my task pane itself. So let me just add those icons into the resources. So I'm just going to select the images and just browse for those two files. I will assign the icon and description using icon and title attributes by decorating my enumeration of commands. So I can specify the type of resources I'm loading icon from and also the name of the resource. And for the title, I'm just going to use issues manager for my task pane and create new issue for my button. So now you can see task pane has new icons. And when I hover the mouse, the corresponding tooltip is displayed. My button also has a new icon and I can also hover the mouse and display the tooltip. Let me also quickly confirm that all of our issues we saved in the previous sessions preserved. So if I open the model, you can see all of the issues get loaded. 
Of course, you can go ahead and implement more sophisticated issues manager. So for example, like in this case, I added a few more fields like severity and status. I might apply some additional visual styles such as, for example, cross uh, out the issue when it is closed or assign different color based on the severity. Please follow the links in the description of this video for the source code for both example add-ins as well as more information about the Svex frameworks. Thank you for your time.